Hi there, and welcome to the short tutorial where I'll show you how you can test an OAuth2 authorization flow using Postman. For this example, I will be using the Imager API, but this will be valid for any other application implementing this authorization flow. So just to be clear, we'll be talking about the OAuth2 authorization code grant flow. And this is a quite widespread way of authorizing using OAuth2. And all the major providers like Facebook and Google are using it all the time and probably you're quite accustomed to it. But let me shortly explain you what's actually happening there. So what is happening is that the application we are in uh, will be getting you to the authorization server and will be providing a redirection URL. Uh, on the authorization server, the user will probably authenticate, uh, given its username and password or whatever authentication mechanism is there. And if it's already authenticated, it will just say uh, like, this application is trying to access some information from your account. Um, do you agree with that? And the user will say yes. And then the application will get an authorization code. With this authorization code, it will go to the authorization server and request an access token. And with that access token, it will be possible to access other protected resources. For example, let's say the application wants to access your profile and with that access token will get all the profile information it needs or all the profile information it has access to. Okay, so let's have a look on how this looks in Postman. So let's assume I'm trying to access this endpoint and if I submit the send button, I will get an error. So this is the endpoint which requires authentication and I haven't provided any authentication information yet. And it doesn't need any uh, username and password, but it needs an OAuth2 token to be able to provide me the information of that. So Postman can deal with that quite easily. And I'm just gonna open a new tab here and demonstrate that. And if you're in the authorization tab, and you select OAuth2, you'll see that you have the possibility of getting a new token. And I'll call, and I'll click this button, and a window will pop up. And of course, you'll see here a lot of information, and you're wondering, what, what is everything here? The way it usually works is that you need to register your application to be able to get a client ID and client secret. And with this information, you can then request this authorization code. So let's cut back to Imager and register our application. Now, as you can see, I have the possibility here to register an application and more or less this looks similar across other platforms as well. So let's call this Postman test. And I'm gonna select all to authorization with a callback URL and as you can saw already in Postman, we have to give this callback URL. So I'm going to copy that, put it in here, and let's type in my email as well. I'm going to click another robot, and I'm going to submit, and basically get information regarding the new application. So. Uh, you can see here I got two secrets. So I have a client ID and a client secret. And this is the kind of information you don't want to make somehow publicly available. So the first step of the process is already there. Let's go ahead and put this information in Postman. So the client ID is this one. The client secret is this one. And these are the two URLs. So one of, one of them is the authentication URL. It's basically the URL where the user will get asked to log into his account and give permission to our application. So I'm gonna paste in the authorized URL. And after the authorization was successful and the application, in this case Postman, gets an authorization code, then it will make a second call to this uh, 
to this token URL where you do a request and you access token. So for Imager, the token URL is this one, but of course, depending on the application, depending on the authorization server, it will provide other endpoints as well. So what I will have to do is request a token, oh, and a window like this will pop up. You can see an application would like to connect to your account, and it says here the application is Postman test. And of course, I will give here my username and password. And I'm going to click here on allow. So I'm going to allowing the Postman application to access this information. Now, as you can see here, I have an existing token. And this is a token, it's a beer type token, and it has an expiration time. And additionally, I have a refresh token as well, but that's uh, Really the scope of this tutorial, we're just going to get into access tokens. Now I have the possibility of adding this token to the header, or I can do that manually. So if I'm going to do it manually, it will look like this. I'm going to, to headers, and this would be an authorization header, and it would be Beer type, and I'm going to get this value. Now, when I make this call to the application, you will see that the authorization was successful, status was 200. There is any data, but um, everything worked out well from an authentication standpoint. If I'm somehow giving a wrong token here, this will say access token provided is invalid. Of course, it's not working. So this is a very quick way to get you up and running on this one. If you want to add it to the header, you can just use header. So select add token to header, use token, and then it will be added to the header as well for this request. So it really depends how you would like to use it. There are some applications which allow you to uh, just uh, get it in the URL, and it will just be uh, like a get parameter. So as you saw, using Postman can be quite useful because it allows you to test the auth to authorization without uh, writing a single line of code. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If yes, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and make sure you check the description for additional tips. See you soon at another tutorial.